Hey y'all, Mike Dixon again here. This is video number five of the Excel Bootcamp. In this video, we are going to introduce uh, pivot tables. So, pivot tables. So, um, in the last video, video number four, if you remember, we uh, we learned uh, how to use functions. And the last part we did was we tried to divide um, sort of counts up by these different uh, branches. Uh, and the sum of years of service and average years of service. And we figured out how to do this with formulas. So all pivot tables are going to really allow us to do is exactly what we just did, only much faster, uh, and uh, and be able to explore the data a little bit uh, a little bit more in depth. So video number five tab, we have um, the same data, first three columns, and then I've added two more columns. So one is the gender of the individual, and then uh, the the amount of retirement they have. Um, saved, right? So a couple more additional variables. So how do we get going with the pivot table? So we go to insert up here in the top, insert uh, ribbon, and then there it is, pivot tables. Just click on that guy, and it's going to get this little pop-up box. Usually it will figure out, uh, you know, Excel will figure out where your data is. So the data has to be organized in this way, where the very top row is going to be uh, uh, the label of the data and then the data has to go down or below that right and then each row uh, is usually some sort of observation or something like that right so in this case each row is a uh, uh, individual right all right so that's it so usually we don't have to do anything else we can put this in a new worksheet or an existing worksheet let's just put a new worksheet it'll make a new worksheet down here so let's click on okay that's it so this is what we get so uh, nothing too exciting yet. Let's move this over so we can kind of see what's going on. So it's all at the same place, about right there. So what it's done is it's kind of figured out that you have five different variables here. All right, and then there's different places we can put them. So how it works is we can grab this and drag it in different places. All right, so we can put it in columns, in rows, column labels, row labels, and then this, uh, this little summation sign says the value. So it will uh, default some things or count things. So let's take an example. So if I grab um, years in service and I just put it here in the values, just drop it, it will say down here sum of years in service and there's the answer, sum of years of service, 15,223. We can actually check that with what we figured out with video three, uh, no video four, sorry, 15,223, there it is right there. So same, we got the same answer. Great, so we can do the same thing. We can drag, um, well, yeah, let's drag in, let's say branch in here. And then if you drag in something that is uh, is not a, a continuous variable, meaning that you can't, uh, you can't add it together. So remember branch, the variable branch, is just army, navy, whatever, right? Like it's a discrete variable. So if you drag that into this value section down here, the default will be to count that, right? So now we have sum of years of service and count of branch, 872. So let's double check that. 872 total number of service members. So that's what it means by count, right? Count of branch. Really, this is the total count of all of your data. It doesn't mean that it's a count of how many branches you have. It's just the total count. Uh, the reason it says count of branch is because you're using branch to count. But I could have done the same thing by dropping, let's say, gender in here. Right? It would have given me the exact same answer, 872. It wouldn't really matter. So you can actually change this to, instead of saying count of gender, you could just say count uh, of observations. Right? So how all I did was click on the cell that says something, and then click up here, or I could hit F2, I did before, and then type whatever I want in there. All right, so let's figure out, um, let's do one more thing. Let's drop, drop in this years of service again into the values. So it's just giving me the years of, of service uh, again, right? Sum of years of service. So sum of years of service, sum of years of service, two, because it's just saying you put it in there twice, count of observations. Well, really what I want this is to be the average of years of service. So what I do to change that is I click this little, over here, click this little arrow, and I say value field settings. Right, and then we get this box, and I can actually find all of these things, right? So account, average, max, min, product, uh, account numbers, standard deviation, standard deviation of the population, variation, variation of the population. So we want the average, all right? So let's click on OK. Here we go. So we get average of years of service, 17.45. Let's double check that. That's right, 17.45. Great. 
So now this is the cool part. So all we've done here is these values. But now we can sort of start dropping things over here in the rows. All right, so if I grab this branch and drop it into this, uh, into this row, let's see what it does. Drop that. So now it figures out, well, there's actually only four values in these rows. So here are the four. And it automatically divides everything by those four. So this is the same thing we did right here. Right? So now we have all this. Remember, we had to do all these different formulas, copy and paste. We just did it in you know one shebang real fast right here. So that's that's the cool part. So now here here it gets a little bit cooler. So let's actually get rid of uh, a couple of these other ones. Let's take out the sum of years of service, take out the count, count of observation. All I have is the average years in service. Now what if I want to figure out by branch and then by gender, right? Within each branch and within each gen within each gender within each branch, what the average years of service is. Well, that's easy. I can grab this gender and I can drop it over here in the column labels. Let's see, watch what happens. So uh, on the uh, in along each row, I have the different branches, and then for this column and this column, it's different. Here's the females, here's the male, and here's the total, right? Grand total on the bottom. So this is an easy way to quickly sort of dissect what the data looks like, right? So I could have done this with sort of a little bit more complicated uh, average if statement, you know, kind of work through the data a little bit, but with pivot tables, I can just do it immediately, right? No problem at all. Great. So let's do uh, let's do one more. Let's take the average out. And let's put retirement savings in here. All right, so here's the sum of retirement savings. That's the default. All right, so if I wanted to put in, um, to make it the average, I go to value field settings, click on average. Let's do max this time, the max. No, let's just stay max. average is fine. Average right there. Great, very cool. So one other thing I wanted to show you with this uh, is this report filter. All right, so say, for example, that I only wanted to see uh, um, let's say, uh, let's say I only wanted to see, um, uh, not, not every, not all branches, right? So then if I drop in, drop the branch over here into report filter and double click, it says, well, which one of these do you want to see? Well, I want to see Air Force, click on this, select multiple items. I can say, I want to see Air Force and Army, click on OK. Now, I'm only seeing, this is, again, the grand totals, but it's only for Air Force and, uh, and Army. If I drag this now down to row labels, you can see I only see Air Force or Army. And here's this little button. This is a little filter, right? This is a funnel. So I can click on that, and it will actually also allow me to filter right here. Right? So I can do the same thing with the column labels. If I click on this little arrow, I can say, well, right now it's select all. I can say, well, actually, all I want to see is females. There's females. So our grand total is the same as females because it's filtered the data, right? It's only allowed, it's only seen, uh, seen the females. So that's pretty cool. All right, one final thing that I wanted to show you, which is kind of interesting. So if I put um, some continuous variable, say like uh, years of service into, the, let's say, the row label, what do I get? Well, I guess something that looks like this, right? So I have just about everything, zero all the way to, looks like somebody has 52 years of service. All right, and then if I put in sort of this retirement savings over here, well, first let's do this. Let's drop in branch right here. So this gives us the count of branch. So this means that there are 11 people who have zero years of service, 29 people who have one, 36 who have two, and so on, right? So I can come all the way down here. I only had one person with 52 years of service. That person is really old. Uh, anyway, no offense to any of you 52 years into service. Um, congratulations on watching this super hip video. Yeah, if you're here. Okay, anyway, what I want to know, though, instead of count a branch, I actually want to see how much retirement savings, what the average retirement savings is for people. So click on really value field settings and say average. So like this person, these people have zero, they actually have zero retirement. But then as you go up, uh, you can see this guy doesn't have as much as he should have, I would say. Uh, but you can see that it hopefully kind of goes up. This data is all made up, by the way, so it doesn't really matter that much. But what I really wanted to do was uh, make these into sort of categories, right? So I wanted to say not only uh, you know, what the average retirement savings is for each of these individual years, but what is it for, you know, from 0 to 10 years, right? So, so can I do that? And then maybe from 10 to 20, and then 20 to 30, and then 30 plus, let's say that, right? So we can do that actually pretty easy. So here's 10, 0 to 10. I just highlight that, right click, 
and say group. And what it does, it makes a whole new variable. Here you can see it's called years in service two. Now in my row label I have two variables. Years in service and years in service two. So this group one is, what it see, you can highlight it, it says years in service two. I can actually change that. Oops, if I click on this, it collapses the other stuff. I can change the name. I actually want this to be called one to 10 years, All right? And then I have to highlight again from 11 to 20. 11 to 20, right click and say group. Then group two shows up. Group two, I can call what 11 to 20 years. Uh, and then let's see, 21 to 30 is what we said. Right click, say group. So there's also this group selection right here. You can also do that. It also does the same thing. Group three, I'm going to type, uh, type what did I say, 21 to 30, oops, 30 years. And then we said 30, 30 years plus, right? So if you have more than 30 years service, we'll just make you all together. So let's try this one, group selection, group four. I can hit F2 right here, and it will also allow me to type and say 31 plus years. Enter. All right, so now I have these all kind of categorized, grouped together, <clears throat> but I, I don't really have the, the total average for each of these, but I can get it pretty easily. All I do is click uh, anywhere in the pivot table, get rid of this years in service, keep the years in service too, but just I can either sort of just drag it up here and let it go, or if you click on here and you say remove field, it just gets rid of it. Now what do I have? Well, I have these four categories, right, and the average for each of those four categories. Right, so this was in the data. I could have gotten it from the data. It would have been a bunch of work to do what I just did, but I did it real fast. Right? So this is what the cool part is. So now that I have this, right, I can look at it by gender, drop gender in over here. Um, I can, I can, maybe I can, this is the cool part about pivots, like, well, I want to put this in columns. All right, so now I have those categories up here, and I can grab branch. All right, so here's by branch, and then I can say by branch and then by gender. All right, so for each branch, and then within each branch, each gender, here it is for the all of these categories, right? So now, where before I just had a whole bunch of, you know, data is what we'd say, a bunch of just numbers. Now I have actual actual information about uh, the the categories. I can make some inference or some uh, some suggestions or just sort of figure out what's going on, right? So we can see this 30 plus. Uh, there's probably nothing in this data given that I made it up, but uh, you know the interesting thing maybe let's look at gender is that if you have you know 30 plus looks like you're going to have uh, in general more more money in savings so by the way these are all in dollars if I highlight all this and hit control shift dollar sign which is really the four it puts it in dollar signs or I can click this little button that does the same thing control shift dollar sign uh, so now that helps me read this a little better so it looks like you know these younger people have about 28,000 in savings up to 206,000 uh, and males have 207 uh, uh, 31 plus where females only have 199 um, you know so we could you know, later find some see if that's statistically different or something like that anyway so this is the cool part about pivot tables we call them pivots because we can sort of move things around right we can grab some different categories and move them around there's more to this so maybe later on I'll make another video uh, with a little bit more advanced pivot table stuff but this should get you enough to really start getting into your data at a whole new level that you've never done before all right stay awesome